Dave. Take one. Well, I'm David LeMake, and I run a company that manufactures component parts for uh, bus shelters. But this side of the automotive started as a bit of a, an accident hobby project, which has turned out to be a little bit of an interesting uh, exercise. So we're now taking uh, and working with people who've got uh, Land Rovers that are uh, poorly, and uh, need a little bit of TLC, and we're bringing them back to almost showroom condition. I had a 1994 classic Range Rover and it was one that we'd forgotten about for a while and I'd actually sent it away to be done by somebody else and the guys that were looking to refurbish it didn't do a good job so I had the vehicle back and I thought well how hard can it be so I started taking bits and bolts bits and bobs off it nuts and bolts and it just turned out to be a great big Meccano set uh, and with Land Rovers, it was designed with simp simplicity in mind, and everything is bolt on, bolt off. You know, what can go wrong? It just means that you've got to read a, an old fashioned uh, instruction manual and work, out, work it out the hard way. Um, there's enough people around that now really do specialise in, in putting these things back together and repairing and servicing them. And, you know, we're, we're, we're putting the team together that knows what they're doing. Um, and you know we're able to help an awful lot of people that are in a stressed out position where they've got the vehicle it's their pride and joy it's a family heirloom for God's sake and you know they just don't want to see these things rotting in a corner so uh, we've accidentally been becoming a little bit of a, a, a respite hospital for poorly Land Rovers. <laughs> We're working with one person who's got one Land Rover and then that metamorphoses into two other people that go that come out of the woodwork and say, well, yeah, actually, I've got one of those as well. Can you just uh, take the rear tub off this and put a fresh one on? Or, yeah, I've got a wheel that doesn't quite go around quite as so quickly as I, I want it to. And can you just take a look? And before you know it, you've, you've actually gone down a route and you've opened up a, a rabbit hole of uh, uh, intrigue, to say the least. <laughs> It goes back right to childhood really, to so back to 1977 when I got to ride in a, a, a very old Range Rover um, and at the time it was brand new but it was the biggest thing I'd ever seen. It just became a passion for me and I just knew that from that moment on I'd, I'd always have one of these vehicles in my life. There was a bit of a hiatus in the uh, around 2006, 2007 where uh, I'd gone in a different direction and I suddenly realised what a mistake that was. So I bought a Range Rover that I thought, let's refurbish it. The, the refurbishment process is a process of take it apart, fix it, put it back together and the next job might be painting. So I've had to learn and it's not hard, you, you just have to be diligent. And YouTube, of course, is pretty good at sort of giving you a, an instruction manual for the things that you don't know. Everybody's a personality, everybody's a character, and the door is always open. Um, and sometimes it can be hard to get on with a working day and getting the job done because people just want to come in and chat about their Land Rovers. People just are enthusiastic. It's sort of almost as if it's in people's blood. You can get a little bit sidetracked every now and again because people just want to talk for, for ages but everybody that comes in knows their stuff they want to help everybody wants to pitch in and if there's something you don't know and you can't understand ask the question because one of those characters does know it this is actually a customer's car and we quite like we quite like this one uh, and it's been around for a little bit of a while because the customer wanted to do it quite carefully and quite quite, quite particularly uh, so we're very proud of having this one in. Um, it's not perfect, but we are finishing it off and it won't be far off perfect when we finished it. New seats, it's had a new paint job, it's had the engine uh, tuned and, you know, it's about as original as it possibly could be. So from a, a 1980s, uh, 1980s car, you, you've got something that is very usable every day. Back in the early 80s, this was the actual brochure that I fell in love with to fall in love with a car. And for a, a teenage lad, 
you know, you had the brochure of the car that you loved, and I knew every inch of this car, and I knew every inch of this brochure. So when it comes to the subtle small details, you have to start looking at the actual shape and you'll see the shape slightly extended. And when you see the shape of the R on this one, it's more, it is squashed up and compact. So the decals on this car have got to come off and be reattached with something that's more appropriate for the, the age of the vehicle. The original vehicle had the wiper arms coming from the left port and the washer jet on the right. And when we look at the vehicle here, somebody's taken them off and they put them back in the wrong order. So what we've got to do is take these out, take the headlining out, switch the motor and the washer jet back over so that they come out in the right place. Don't really know what we're going to find when we take it apart, but we just know that it's not right. So as you quite rightly say, if it's not right, it's wrong. And <laughs> you know, it needs fixing. It makes me want to go get the correct decals now. He's, not, <laughs> he's actually said to us, he said, I oh, don't bother with them. You know, this was the car that I was, I was first passionate about. And it was all because there was a girl that I fancied in primary school, and her mother had one. Is that good enough? <laughs>